All right, we're doing episode three, and we are once again missing a bro. But I labeled it 26. Hopefully, uh, this gets fixed. Uh... Oh, and it is. Tw- I think it is 26, because I went back, and when I did the scrub, there was um, episodes being skipped over or something like that. So not really a big deal. We know where we are now. Anyways, so the first thing that I obviously want to talk about was the tariffs. Right. And I I definitely want to get obvious things out in the open. Um, Let's do it. Because maybe even things aren't so obvious to me or you that I think are, or to you that I think are. All right. Vice versa. So there's obviously ripple effects to this kind of crap. And sure. I just don't know... And I, I follow on a day-to-day basis what the president says and tweets closer than probably you do. Admittedly. You're you're a better man than I because sure. Fuck that. <laughs> I, I understand that. I think most people do. But I don't I don't from what he's ever since he announced it and then the things that he said after, I don't know that he fully and it's it it baffles me to say this about the president of the United States. I don't know that he fully understands the effects that this will have. Um, No, I think the difference though, is that our last presidents would actually listen to their advisors. This one doesn't. And I'm less, and I'm less inclined to have a discussion about the president and why he did this and what he feels like. And, okay. um, But I, I brought up that because, because I wanted to segue into just, just ripple effects. Like, Mm -hmm. is this look, let's, 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 let's be, I feel like let's in my, I'll try to be intellectually honest from my opinion. Okay. Let's make sure that we do address that. I'm sure that workers in the aluminum and steel industry in this country will be helped by this workers in those industries will be helped, but we need to talk about how many jobs that actually is. And we need to talk about how, I think introducing tariffs like this, it's not going to turn things around tomorrow, right? This needs to be, if you, if this is actually going to turn around the few jobs that this will save, you actually have to stick to this policy for a while. Jobs don't just pop up overnight mm-hmm. or even in a year or two. If you're going to cement policy like this to be protectionist over a sector of the economy, um, it needs to be something that you stick to for a long time. It, you know, any uncertainty markets hate uncertainty. And so if you're the president Trump and you're just willy nilly announcing this, which it seems like he did a little bit, at least I'm sure they've had discussions over the last 13 months, but it didn't seem like they were totally prepared to do this in the normal way. If you're going to do this willy nilly, like, Oh man, I, I just, Oh gosh. I, I just don't know that he's he's considering all the reports. I'm, I'm not convinced though that it's completely willy nilly, right? Let's not I, I, Right. And I said and I said I'm sure it's not completely willy nilly. I'm hundred percent sure. He's been camp he campaigned on this, all right. It's definitely not willy nilly. Um I I just I I don't know that the way that he did it was the best way, which but how do you know uh, that? Like, what are you sure. basing it on? Let's, let's I start think, I think, sure. I think what I would base it on is the fact that people in his own party up and down are not for this. Mm-hmm. And there are more people actually on the Democratic side who are for this. And so that immediately say, tells I'm, me something is weird. I'm looking Period. at this. According sure. to CNBC, right? And again, take whatever sure. you want with a grain of salt. I don't care. Okay. But according to CNBC.com. Oh, yeah. Trump's steel tariffs are earning him cheers from Democrats and unions. Now, yeah. more specifically, right? <laughs> I'm not as concerned about that because we no. all know that this president is breaking the mold, right? Yeah, That's sure. Safe, safe thing to say. What I'm more concerned about is when I keep going down here, and I'm not really sure what website this is. It's called Axios, A X I O S. Yeah, um, I've heard of it. I've heard okay. Of it. I, I don't know what they're about, but I'm just looking at it. Chinese official on Trump's tariffs. We will not sit idly by. What of course do you I think it is that is also pulling such a strong reaction out of China? 
Well, of Why course, is China because, so pissed about it? Because they take advantage of 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 it. And if I'm sure Trump said that he was going to clamp down on China, sure. I mean, he's doing it right. But we also have to consider the Canadas of the world, who actually run themselves a deficit on their steel trade specifically with us. I and understand that. No, no, and I for the that. sure and for the administration because uh, one of the administ I think it was. Um, Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, went on a Sunday show and basically said there will be no exceptions. And so for there to be no exceptions is is interesting. Um, because, okay, if we want to talk about, I bet you if you came out and you did a little more organized and, and you had a bullet plan that said we want to make things as fair as possible because everybody knows things can't be perfect. But if we want to make things more fair, we want to make things more as fair as possible. We're going to target China. I bet you, you get a lot of people on board with that. If you do it in a certain way that doesn't just paint a brush over allies and adversaries the same way. I don't, you know, that's really weird. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. You consider China to be an adversary. I don't know. I don't know. These are the I would, though. Questions I that would. we have to really explore in order to explain what's going on, I think. I, and I'm. let's make sure. this very clear. I'm not going to be able to explain what's going on. I'm merely no, just asking course. the question. Oh, of course not. Yeah. yeah no worries. So do you, would you see China yeah. as an adversary? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't. I don't, I don't know that... Um, I don't know that... China has why would China have America's best interests heart at heart? Well, I get you. I agree with you, but right. it, you have to say the same thing about Canada or Mexico or any but, other but, country. Yes, right? and I agree. Right, of course any country. But right. but context matters here and China's running a surplus against us. Canada's mm. actually running a deficit against us in this okay. in this trade market. And I and I need to, I need to, I need to cite that you're not wrong. So why but, is it then specifically that sure. that people feel or the chinese feel that this is really about them against trump or against quote unquote america and i say quote unquote because i'm I'm not sure trump necessarily represents all of america but why is it that this is such a sticking point for china why oh because they're just like oh we just you know because they make a bunch of money off us because they make a bunch of money off us so they'd be rightfully pissed about that right yeah, but why is it in Trump's best interest to piss off China? I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, if we continue to ask sure. this question, who does this yeah. benefit? Yeah, because one would argue that well, Trump uses this stuff to build his buildings. Yeah, uh, look, uh, look, there, there, there's oh yeah, <laughs> and that's Actually, a silly. I didn't, thing I didn't know you were going to go down that road. Well, that's a silly thing to say because realistically, I think it, buildings I, does he actually build? He doesn't build it. He buys them and relabels them or whatever the case may be. But, yeah, I, I but people will make that argument. So so who truly benefits here? Who is the winner of this policy yeah. being enacted? And I don't know that answer, but I feel like it's one right out. <laughs> right. I, that's a great question because that will tell you a lot about why this happened. <laughs> For sure. If you got the actual honest answer to that, then yeah, you'd. You'd Which know, is difficult uh, to do, you know. Oh, to super difficult to do. Oh, but, Jesus Christ, super difficult. But to I do. feel like there's something in there that needs to be explored, and someone will come I, out with an article soon, explaining yeah. what it I, is. I, I, it's it's also I think maybe you didn't even mean to, but I feel like you alluded to a point of it's easier to it's 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 much easier to criticize than to actually govern, and that is oh for sure one hundred percent true. If I sit, if I sat in the position that Trump sat in, and made a decision on this one way or the other half the people would hate me half the people would love me you know there'd be people that were critical there'd be people that get in the nuanced details and say well this is going to affect this and this and this so you're right i think when you say oh we can't know if this is actually good you know who knows this could be a good thing we don't know the whole story yes but 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 every time we talk about trump and the decisions that trump makes it's i think and maybe you don't Maybe you approach every individual decision he makes separately, but I think it's important to keep everything in context. And this is not a man who's reasonable. This is not a man who's reasonable and who does well, things what, in a reasonable what, way. Sure. What is it that makes you feel like he's unreasonable? He doesn't do things um, in the same way that 
regardless of party, past presidents did things. Now, now could that, that wait, wait, be? Wait, wait, hang on. Could that be? Wait, wait. Is that no, being unreasonable though? No, that's not. That's okay. not being unreasonable. But it's definitely a red flag to me. It, it it makes me think: Why is he doing things so drastically different than people who wildly disagreed on things before him? W and Obama wildly disagreed on things. They do not see the world in the same way. Um, but they didn't. They didn't have. Con they didn't. What people like to call controlled. They didn't operate in chaos. A lot of people like to say, "Oh, Trump thrives in chaos. This is what he likes." Okay, and I don't even know that I have the right to say that that's the wrong way to lead. I just. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder why he. He does. He, he leads in that way. You know, but I'm not wonder, sure it's sure. fair to say that that's unreasonable. No, I, I think that's that's right. I, I don't think that's unreasonable. I think what's unreasonable is his his Twitter escapades, and I think what's unreasonable is um, the fact that he touts that he's a deal maker, but in reality, he's just a panderer. You know, I think what's unreasonable I mean, is, is the he fact that he'll announce he Who's absolutely with this? he absolutely well, well, hold on right, but with this move specifically because the impression up until now is that he's been pandering to specifically the right, but with this move <laughs> is he does he just I think, I think everybody I, I think that he still sees this move as in his best interest politically with his base and the way he ran, so yeah, I think this is still him pandering. I get what you're saying. Is it actually pandering if you're not you know uh a pandering a typically a is just your sure. party. Sure, but it doesn't have to be. And I think that he, he sees this. Also, there's been a lot that happened out of the administration in the last week. Very negative. In the last two weeks. Jesus Christ, sure. in the last 13 months. Sure. So there's a part of me that, that sometimes thinks that when things get really bad, he just chucks these grenades in. Um, and, 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 and if you want to challenge me and say maybe this whole thing was planned out, that's fine. But I'm I not. Like I'm not. not Sure, no, no. but fine. If someone does say that, that's fine. I would challenge, look at his history of being president. The whole transgender thing last summer was not thought out, was randomly tweeted, was a very impulse right, thing. Right. And now we're, we're eight months later, Pentagon's like, no, fuck you. We're not doing that because it's stupid. Literally, the Pentagon basically said that. Right. So, right. The, but these that's are not the a bad thing. No, of course not. I, I, and, and, it doesn't and, matter how you feel about it. These are the things that show me that that worry me when he makes decisions on things like tariffs. Tariffs make a are a big deal, man. They make a difference. I, I, you're absolutely correct. In this country, you're talking, right? You're talking about a raw material, the rawest material that we use and to so make now I worry about, everything. And now I worry about him attaching his. I'll spout off whatever the hell I want whenever I want, and not really think it through. In my opinion, I guess that is an opinion, but that is one that I hold, and not think it through. And now he's wading into the realm of, dude, this is really going to affect things. Are you really thinking through what you're doing? I mm -hmm. don't know that you are. We shall see. I th it's hard for we me shall to see. say that when it comes to tariffs, <laughs> yeah, that he wouldn't have a team of people double-checking everything. He might be doing what he wants at the end, but there's, you're good and goddamn sure that people are checking. Right? I because agree, but I don't know. He still has to do things yeah. legally, right? Sure, sure. So we can't say he's just fucking waking up one no. morning saying, you know what? No. Sure. I'm adding fucking tariffs because I feel like it. Right? At the end of the day, they might be saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't do it this way. And he's deciding to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Right? That's definitely true. But at the same yeah. time, there's definitely people checking. Yeah. And, and, and what I'm starting to equate we'll this to sure. is a poor version of... A very bad version, but a version nonetheless of FDR's fireside chats. I believe it was FDR, right? It was. Are you comparing his Twitter usage to the fireside yeah. chat? Yeah, think about it. I don't People disagree. People had more I information right. when he was doing that than <laughs> yeah. at any point since then until now, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is 2018's version of fireside chats, buddy. I think that's right. And it might be done very shittily. It, that's not even a word, but still, that it might be done very poorly. Right. But, but that's exactly what it is. And I almost, even though... Of, the man's not stupid. That's what we know. Uh, so, yeah, He I, might I, make I, poor I, decisions, but I'm not necessarily that sure doesn't that's mean enough to call him stupid. stupid. Right. I think he's impulsive. 
Wow, for sure. Impulsive. I'll, I'll agree <laughs> with you that. Yeah, for sure. I'll agree with you there. Yeah, but he's not wow. stupid. It's just interesting, right? And and I don't know enough about the tariffs to make a true comment, but my ultimate wonder is who benefits? That's what I want to know. Right. Who's the winner at the end that's a the- great question because if you can get the straight, honest answer on that, you'll figure out a lot behind why the decision It'll was tell made. Us a lot. Yeah. It will. It will. It but will. you need the honest, you know, who knows what the honest answer well, is. Well, maybe next week at some point, one of us will find an article that has a pretty decent explanation as to who. Who's yeah, the winner. And I, if that's the case, I would like to continue to explore this. And I have no problem reading that article. And, and, and if it's well written and it's a good read, but it's still one opinion. It's still bi- one bias. Um, sure. Not that sure. a bad one, but biases don't need to be bad, but they just exist. So for sure, you, know, you, you always got to just keep looking. I'm I'm open to reading every good article we can find on it. Um, but, you know. Never coming to a for sure conclusion when you don't know for sure. You just you just got to keep searching, keep searching. Hundred percent. Now, all right. Like, moving over, yeah, moving over to this article. I want to do this really quick because I didn't want this to be too long. Oof, I, I, don't, I don't want this to be really quick, but I'll I'll do whatever you want to do. <laughs> right. Uh. Well, I, I want I just want to get us into a habit of, of 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 not having too long things that people. Oh, I wish we could. I wish we could plan this more effectively. Where on every Sunday or every other no. Sunday, we all met up at our, at my house and we filmed it Dude, too. I I I I hope to get there. I think that if there's any sort of legitimacy to this thing, even on a Ooh. scale that's motivatingly motivating enough, that would be that would be a lot of fun. Um, but, but anyway, so, Market Watch, right? MarketWatch.com, right? Has sure. a an article, one of the most important charts about the economy this century and what it means for, for market volatility. Mm-hmm. Now, the article itself is talking about volatility, inflation, you know, what mm-hmm. it means for wages, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, I read what it. What I want to look at specifically is why is it that in 20 years, mm-hmm. I'm looking at this chart and and the highest inflation rate at over 200% is hospital services followed by college textbooks college tuition now there's a big gap there right where they're you're at like 170 170 percent and then down to like 120 percent. so there's a big gap there down to child care medical services or medical care services wages housing food and beverage and then when you get to zero you're at new cars household furnishings clothing cell phone service software right. toys tvs yeah all the way down to almost minus 100 percent on tvs as someone who potentially might run for an office here shortly, sure. When you approach someone who's conservative and is in support of the free market, mm-hmm. there's the potential here for somebody to argue mm-hmm. that most of these things in the red, for those of you looking at the chart, That's are right. things that are impacted by government in one way or another, in a large way. And those in blue, a lot of hands-off, laissez-faire type shit. How do you go most about explaining the, that? Most of the things in blue mm-hmm. are cheap labor. Every th- okay. most of the things in red are American labor. Period. You can't ex you can't export that. So that's another variable. Food and beverage. I think, I think that when I scroll down, you can exploit cheap labor and food and beverage. I think that when I scroll down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I read that, that, that tweet, I agree. And I always will until the day I die. Competition is a great thing. Competition is good, good, good. If we want to have a conversation about have introducing competition into the area of college textbooks, college tuition, hospital services, medical care services. If we want to introduce more competition into those arenas to drive the price down, yes, that makes sense. Mm. I, I don't know who's going to tell you that's not going to make sense, but I think it is disingenuous to say that to to say that the only reason or even uh, the majority large big reason that these things are the way they are is because of just government subsidies. That is wait 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 wait. Let's pause. I understand what you're saying, and I do agree with it to a large degree. Sure. I'm not talking about specifically government subsidies. Okay. We're talking about government intervention of any sort. Okay. 
of any sort. And whether or not okay. it's good or bad, sure. that's what I'm talking I would about. I would also say this as I look at this chart. Mm -hmm. The things that are above that black line yep. are things that I'm not gonna say they're needs, but they're very important things. Extremely. Do we want to be TVs are not important, toys are not important, clothing isn't so wildly cars, you know, you know, healthcare yeah. is wow, that's a sticking point. Hold on, hold on, let's pause. Sure. Sure. Because all of that works until you talk about software. I know. Look, it's not perfect. No, right. Listen, none of these arguments are perfect. We're just, just lobbing I, back and forth. I feel the need to point that sure. out, though. Right. Um, I think, like I said, you know, get rid of that second thing I said. The first thing I said sticks to me more. The first thing that I saw was TVs, software, right, toys, cell phones, maybe not service, but cell phones, clothing. Household furnishings, cars, things that are made with cheap labor, not so much in the in the United States, not so much, especially TVs. Woo. We talk about hospital services. Now we're talking about, well, we have to have Americans doing that. And that's going to cost more. Uh, college textbooks is ridiculous. That is straight scam. Mm. I don't even know that we, I, I don't even know why that's up there so high. That is such bullshit. I, I, I would just, I would argue spicy. the same for college tuition. Oh sure, but and and I wouldn't even say you're wrong. I would what, say there's a lot of government money that flows of... into that, and I got you. But but it is wait, the wait, 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 wait. of bullshit. Before, before it doesn't have to be that way. way. Tuition could have been gone going up fine, whatever. But textbooks didn't have to. Like why? That's just greed from from professors. Buy my book. Pisses me off. Right, right, I hate right. that. Anyways, go ahead. and I think actually the <laughs> internet. If you sure. look very closely at the chart, right. Once it hit about 2015, it starts tapering off and even dropping just a hair. And I think yeah, that's because of the internet. <laughs> right? If one Maybe. kid buys the book and fucking yeah, torrents that shit and scans every page. That is interesting. I'm not buying that fucking book. I'm going I on think, Pirate Bay and I'm finding it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I've done that for most of my books. But you're right, right? American labor is expensive. It's right. expensive. And and I also think that this chart paints a very specific picture, and I think it paints one because I'll bet you anything. There's a bunch of things that you could have put in here that wouldn't make sense, where the cost would have increased. Yeah, even mm -hmm. though it's a product like like cell phone service or toys or TVs, and I'll bet you there's one the opposite that is has a heavy hand from the government mm -hmm. that has gone down. Right. And, and to me, this is more than just let's look at this and talk about, you know, why this is the case. But also, let's make sure that we're keeping in mind what we're looking at. Right. right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen 12, 13, 14, 15 products and services were chosen for this chart. Mm -hmm. We offer way more than fucking 15. Sure. Right. And I wonder where everything else would lay out. You know? Whenever I whenever I read something, though, I always think of of like I said earlier today and earlier in this discussion. There's a basis of truth. I'm trying to find the basis of truth, and then I'm also trying to find where that might fail. And so I, I look at this tweet, right? The tweet in the article, and I see blue, you know, blue lines, prices, subjective, free market forces, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. red lines, and I see the conclusion. Remind me why socialism is so great again. I feel like this person is painting socialism in a everything has to be non-competitive you know entity owned and and you know i could be wrong you know what we might we might look up the definition of socialism and it could be that um it's we don't care about competition i don't know i should probably look it up right now but i don't know that socialism is communism i don't like that he says he's saying it just feels like he's painting a broad brush of socialism is always, always, always terrible. And that's not, not, not true. It's not, you know, I, there listen. needs to be a balance of, there are definitely, you know, different areas of our economy, different areas of society right now that when we let them go to free market forces, it might not be the best option for them. I think that's a very few, that's a very little part of the market. I think most of the market responds well to that. But I think when we talk about healthcare, when we talk about playing with people's lives, I don't know that we should subject that to profits in a free market. I think so at the same time, though, it should be subject to competition. I don't know why we can't have 
socialism in the government funded, we're going to single payer tax or, or however you do it, the government funded sense, but also inside of that, inside of that arena, have entities compete against each other? Why can't we have a bunch of nonprofits in an arena of a single payer compete against each other to also have that competition forces? Well, it depends, right? Because no? there's a lot of, no. because sure. there's a lot of government rules, for example. Sure. Right. And this, and one day somebody might listen to this and be like, wow, this guy's an idiot. But either way, <laughs> it, here in Rochester, if, if, or not even in Rochester in the country, if you're a woman owned business, you get an advantage on government contracts, period. Yeah. That's law. So how I, I, truly I, I, yeah. free market is the government? That's the problem, right? If the government was really saying, if single right. payer was saying, listen, we're single payer, but right when we pay these things out, we are going to be subject to the free market specifically okay i'm on board but it's the yo rule i'm on board with that too I, but sure. it's the self-imposed rules of the government that i struggle right. for example right. and, and, and I think if you're that, a woman-owned business but you cost more than a guy than a guy who owns a business well you're not really being free market with your money right it's the idea of picking winners and losers i don't like right. that either i i want a government i want government to provide services that 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 we need because look, society's not perfect. There's definitely a role for government. And but I don't want but I, I, I want them to pay out in a way that we agree will do better for these people, whoever they are and whatever their payment is. But it needs to be, like you said, subjected to a a competition aspect. It can't just be right. and so the problem is well now if government has control over the whole competition aspect, then it's a slippery slope and they could just take blah 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 blah. And I understand that and it's hard, man. <laughs> it is hard. And it's that's hard. the whole reason why we have these discussions. Because if it was think, easy, think, we sure. wouldn't have to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. I think a lot of it, a lot of it, and this is why I have a problem with not just the current president we have, we've had, we have right now, but with a lot of the leadership we have. You know, it starts with leadership. If leadership's not doing right by the people, then you're going to have a government that's full of garbage and full of shit and full of corruption and just trash. You, it, it's all about the people you put into power. Unfortunately, it still is. Mm -hmm. And, and I totally, and I, and I, I almost hate to say this, but when I listen to a coherent right wing person who knows how to argue well, and they argue the right points for having more of an autocracy that can respond quicker and be more efficient, there are arguments to be made. There are. Mm -hmm. but Just like sure. when I listen to somebody who's a bleeding heart liberal. <laughs> and I love that term. You know I love that term. I know. But when I, I listen funny. to somebody that's like that and makes sure. a valid argument for sure. being much more compassionate in our and in, in having much more empathy towards how we do things, it's like, sure. oh, yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. 100%. And so you need to have a leader that just can balance things well can balance different viewpoints um i it just it leadership is a big deal well, and, and i, I think I, that we've severely lacked in that not just with this president um and with this congress but we've severely lacked in that for for a hot minute we we need people who are legitimately selfless we don't have those people and we do we do they just have no they they're have no not interest in running for government that's true <laughs> And then, <laughs> that's and then the problem, now, man. now let's circle back to and we're not going to go into this but now let's circle back into the fact that we're a really wealthy country and even the most disadvantaged people here are still advantaged compared to other people in other countries and so mm -hmm. that breeds complacency <laughs> you know it's not and, even complacency i think those sure. who are in a position or have this skill set to truly be empathetic while also being reasonable mindful, and responsible yeah right or, or well mindful of competition in, in our last oh, case sure. in our last scenario yeah um don't care to run for government you want to know why because you get your goddamn ass kicked you do being president you do nobody has an interest in doing that except for very self-absorbed yeah um uh, people at this point <laughs> sad yeah sad you know, yeah. that's what's frustrating, right? Definitely not people that are selfless. No, so. I think no. I think that Why does I think one that president. Surprisingly enough, I think that 
I think that we both look at this article, we read through this article, and sure, we we disagree um, on maybe the first things that we see from it, why we think it is the way it is. Well, I'm not sure that we disagree. I'm just but I, but I, but I, well, I think you know, just worldview and ide- ideologically, sure, there's there's some disagreements, but I, I I think we both understand that there's value in in not painting things with a broad brush. There's value in saying, okay, there's a lot of variables. Okay, we need to, if we're going to find a solution, we need to find one that's just fucking realistic and reasonable. Like, sure, let's have a discussion about um, about anything, whatever it is. But, but let's have one where, I don't know. Because it's just everything is every, if you approach every, like you, you look at this chart, it's hospital services on down to TVs. Every single one of these are a different sector of the economy that can't be approached in the same way, you know? And so that's but that's where we where a lot problem. of the, the surface arguments in society, I feel like it's caught up in it has to be one way or the other. Not that they're arguing it has to be, but it just ends right. up being that way and it feels stupid and weird and like why are we doing that? Well, if you're looking through this list, specifically for me, right, yeah. the biggest one that jumps off the page is childcare. Sure. And I can tell you that childcare is fucking insane. Right. It is unreal. And I don't know, honestly, two, let's say two parents, two working parents that make minimum wage. No, nah, forget about it. You ain't paying for childcare. And so, and happening. so, right. And so now the and question for is, me, not- that's like a big deal for me just because of my personal right. experience. Like, how is it that it's so- at 125% inflation? Why, why is this a big deal for me as well? And you're right. But why is this a big deal for me as well? Is because when we talk about children, we talk about people who don't get to have control over their lives just yet. Mm-hmm. And so when that's the case, we need to make sure we're doing right by them. I am, I am a huge advocate for from the minute a child is born to the minute we declare that they're an adult, which is right now 18, we should be doing our best. To, to make sure that they have, an, they have ample opportunity to succeed in our society. We should be doing our best to educate them as much as, not as much as we can, but we should be doing our best to make sure that every child, the minute they become an adult, they've had ample opportunity to prepare and be ready for this moment to be responsible. And when that moment comes, you don't get anything else. It's over. It's time to be an adult. You know what I'm saying? There's got to be a way that we can say these children don't have a choice. Sure, parenting will still affect children. You can never fix that. Parents are the way they are. But we, we need to do our best to, to make sure kids are fed and they're safe and they're healthy and they're being educated as much as they should be to have the ample opportunity they need. And then the minute that it's time to be responsible, go cry me a river. I've done what I can for you. Now it's time for you to do you. 